Welcome to this tutorial on countable and uncountable sets. In mathematics, we often have sets of objects. These objects can be numbers, functions, matrices, or just about anything. And the objects in a set are called elements. The number of elements in a set can be either finite or infinite. That's quite straightforward. So for example, we might have 10 elements or 100 elements or 1000 elements in a set. And in any of these cases, we have a finite set. On the other hand, we might have an infinite number of elements in the set. So hopefully we've got no problem understanding the difference between finite and infinite sets. But something that's not quite so easy to understand at first is the difference between countable sets and uncountable sets, because that's something different. And that's what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. So we're going to talk about countable sets and uncountable sets and explain the difference between them. And we're also going to have a look at some examples of countable and uncountable sets. And we're also going to talk about some related concepts, such as the cardinality of a set. So to start off, let's think of a set of numbers. Suppose our set contains 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. And this set is obviously finite. You can count the number of elements, and there are five elements. And we say that the cardinality of this set is five. So I've just mentioned the word cardinality. What does this word mean? Well, it's very simple, or at least it's simple if we have a finite set. If we have a finite set, the cardinality is simply the number of elements in the set. So if we have five elements in the set, the cardinality is five. A finite set is always countable, and the cardinality is simply the number of elements in the set. So that's nice and easy. So now let's move on to talking about infinite sets. Suppose we have a set of numbers which contains all of the integers greater than 10. So here's our set, it contains 11, 12, 13 and so on. And this dot 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 at the end here indicates that we have infinitely many elements. So our set goes on forever. So we know that this set is infinite, and we want to decide whether or not it's countable. So what does this word actually mean? We said that our finite set earlier was countable, but we didn't say exactly what that meant. So here's a definition. A set is said to be countable if its elements can be placed in one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. And when a set is countable, we say that it has the same cardinality as the set of natural numbers. So when we refer to the natural numbers, we mean the counting numbers 1, 2, 3 and so on. And the set of natural numbers is actually infinite, so it's not easy to explain what we mean by the cardinality of an infinite set. But we can talk about what it means for two infinite sets to have the same cardinality. And that's what we're going to do in the next few slides. So what does one-to-one -one correspondence mean? Well, suppose we have two sets of numbers, the set of odd natural numbers and the set of even natural numbers. And we can match up the elements of these sets one-to-one -one in a number of ways. For example, we can match one and two, match three and four, match five and six, etc. And this shows that the two sets have a one-to-one -one correspondence because each element of the first set is linked to one element and only one element of the second set, and each element of the second set is linked to one element and only one element of the first set. So just to emphasise the point, let's say we have two sets of objects, any old objects, and we try to match them up like this. This is not a one-to-one -one correspondence, for two reasons. First of all, this element here, circled in green, is linked to two elements from the top set, and this element here next to it isn't linked to any elements from the top set at all. So this is definitely not a one-to-one -one correspondence. So remember this set that we were talking about earlier, the set of all of the integers greater than 10. If we want to show that the set is countable, we need to show it has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers. That's using our definition. 
So now, just to start using some more mathematical language, suppose n is a natural number, little n that is. So it's an element in this set. And let's define a function f of n by saying f of n equals n plus 10. Then obviously f of n is going to belong to this set, the set of all integers greater than 10. We say that f of n is a bijective function between these two sets. So I've labelled these sets a and b. a is just the set of natural numbers, and b is our set of integers greater than 10. And what that means is that for any element in the set b, there is one element and only one element of the set a, which satisfies the relationship f of a equals b. So if we choose an element in set b, for example 12, there is only one element in set a that you can apply the function f to to get 12. And that's obviously the number 2, because f of 2 equals 12. And if there exists a bijective function between these two sets, that's actually exactly the same thing as saying that the sets are in one-to-one -one correspondence. And we know from our definition earlier that if a set has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers, that means it's countable. So therefore, if there is a bijection with the natural numbers, that also means the set is countable. So the set of integers greater than 10, which we've been looking at, is in fact countable. Now in maths, a lot of the time we have both formal definitions and informal definitions. And the advantage of formal definitions is that they are more precise. The advantage of informal definitions is that they are easier to understand. So now we're going to explain how to show a set is countable in both a formal and an informal way.